Royal and humble greetings to each and every one. Have you ever wondered what encouraged King Shark to conquer and merge with other clans? His inspiration leading to him having this kind of mentality. Now, to get a clear response to that, we're going to be going through the captivating saga of King Tingiswai, a king whose life was nothing short of a roller coaster. His journey through power struggles unexpected alliances, and his mentorship role. Tengiswayo was born around 1760 as Kotongwana at Eyongwen, present-day KwaZulu-Natal. His mother was Mabamba Katonda, and his father was Chobe Kakai, a Mtetwa king. Nandi, who is Shaka's mother, settled with them Tetwa under King Job, which caused Shaka to grow up under them Tetwa rulers. In the late 1700s, began a time of tribal rivalries and shifting alliances. Kotongwan found himself caught in the midst of quest for leadership. This follows after him and his brother Tana plotted against their father Job but their plot was discovered. Tana was killed and Kotongwana made his escape. He found refuge in the foothills of Trangensberg among the Shubi and Langeni people, where he changed his name to Tingiswayo, which means one in distress or one in exile. After the death of his father, King Jobe of the Mtetwa, Tingiswayo returned to claim kingship and found his brother Mawewe, in power and displaced him immediately. Mawewe tried to run away but was captured and killed. The more we dig deep into Tingiswayo's life, things get more and more interesting. As his life takes an unexpected turn, when, during his travels, he stumbles upon a European explorer on a horseback. Tingiswayo offers his help and in return, he gains not just a horse and a gun, which ignited a glimpse into a world of possibilities that will soon shape the destiny of his people. Now fast forward to Tingiswayo's rise to chiefdom, fueled by the desire to connect with the Portuguese at Delagoa Bay. Tingiswayo opens up trade, unleashing a wave of progress in the community. But Tingiswayo wasn't just about trade. He was a military genius too. He revolutionized his army with age regiments and smart military tactics, splitting groups and forming shields when battling in war. Tingiswayo was determined at being the strongest leader feared by all. Now prompting the entrance of Shaga, a young leader rising under Tingiswayo's influence. With Tingiswayo's support, Shaka takes charge of the Zulu tribe marking the beginning of a new chapter, whereby the student becomes the leader and Tingiswayo's legacy spreads even further. Now the Nyambose people from the Mtetwa engaged in trade with the Portuguese at the Delagoa Bay from the 1750s to the 1820s. The key exports from this African region were elephant ivory, kettles, and enslaved individuals. In the 1810s, Portuguese soldiers formed an alliance with Tingiswai, and firearms were brought through the Dalakoa Bay from Tetwa. Under Tingiswayo's leadership, Tetwa developed strong ties with the Zulu chief Tensi to the west. It is recorded that when Shaka returned to claim the Zulu chieftainship, he still recognized the large Amtetwa and Tingiswai as overlord. In 1817, Tingiswai was captured and beheaded by Zwite at Ngome, near Nongom, following an attempt to invade their land, forcing them Tetwa to scatter temporarily, and reforming under King Shaka, who later defeated Zwite in a Zulu civil war. After Tingiswayo's death, Tetwa merged with the Zulu and other local groups to create the Zulu kingdom under Shaka. The descendants of the Nyambose became chiefs under various Zulu kings. 
it is evident that the Mtetwa played a role in introducing military and administrative innovations such as this system of age regiments, which is Amabut, who are very popular now in the Zulu Kingdom. However, the older theory attributing the introduction of Amabut to the Nyambosi rulers is no longer accepted due to the evidence showing the widespread existence of Amabutu dating back to the 18th century. Now Tingiswayo became the last king of the Mtetwa Empire, which began with Mtetwa, the Nyambos, Kubazi, Ndrovu, Simamani, Matungu, Aba, Kanyi, Chobe, and then Tingiswayo, as it was stated in 1995 by Muzim Tetwa. Now that was Kotongwa Nakakai, formerly known as King Tingiswayo, who was Shaka Zulu's mentor, and then Tetwa kingship lineage. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Until the next one, thank you for watching.